Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Gifford and today I'm going to talk to you about Lesson 9-9, Analyzing Functions with Successive Differences. And after today's lesson, you will be able to identify and write equations for linear, quadratic, and exponential functions. So let's take a look real quick. What are the general forms of linear, quadratic, and exponential functions? So as we've talked quite a bit about over the last um, school year, we've talked a lot about linear equations. Again, m in a linear equation represents the slope, and b is the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept is where the graph crosses the y-axis and that coordinate pair is 0 comma something. And then we have quadratic functions and then we talk about exponential functions and in exponential functions the a is the term where x is 0 and b, remember exponential the ones that end up being multiplied by, so b is what you multiply by. So again, when we take a look then at the equation, or excuse me, the graphs, linear graphs, of course, go in a straight line. This particular graph has a negative slope because it's going down to the right. And if it was going up to the right, it would be positive. We see that this quadratic function um, is a quadratic function because it's in the shape of a U, and it does have this minimum value down here, and it has two solutions. Solutions, again, uh, are where the graph crosses the x-axis. And then the last one is an exponential function, and again, that's the one where we talk about it kind of being swoopy, um, and it goes up um, at quite a fast rate, or in some cases, it'll also be a decreasing relationship. So what we're going to do is take this set of numbers, these ordered pairs, and we're going to graph them to determine if it's linear, quadratic, or an exponential function. So the first thing we have here is this grid, and we need to set up our scales. And my x values go from negative 1 to positive 2. So what I'm going to do is actually go every other. There's my negative 1, positive 1, skip 1, 2, skip 1, 3, skip 1. So there's my x-axis. And then my y-axis I see goes from 0 0.25 all the way up to 16. I think I'll be able to do it count um, by 1. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 16. And that again is my y-axis. So now I'm going to graph these coordinate pairs. My first one is the coordinate pair of negative 1 comma 0 0.25. So I go to negative 1 on the x-axis, 0 0.25. Now again, I counted by 1's. 0 0.25 is halfway, um, it's pretty close to the x-axis, but halfway between the halfway part. Okay, if that's the half, 0 0.5, then 0 0.25 is halfway between that and the x-axis. My next coordinate pair is 0, 1. My next coordinate pair is 1, 4. I think you might be able to determine already what type of relationship this is. And my next one is 2, 16. So over to 2 up to 16. And if I connect these points, what type of relationship is this showing me? In this case, this one is exponential. Okay, and how do we know it's exponential? It's because the graph is swoopy. Again, a really technical term I know, but that is an exponential graph. If our, if our um, table was counting by the same value, a constant rate, then we know we would end up with a linear equation. And then if we see symmetric symmetry in our table, we know that that is going to be quadratic. So let's take a look. How can we use this whole idea of patterns of differences to help determine what type of function is represented? So patterns of differences. Differences, of course, means to subtract. And in these tables, so if we take a look at linear, okay, when the first differences are equal, so if we take a look at this and we say, okay, well, what is negative 3 minus negative 8? Subtracting a negative is like adding a positive, so we get 5. And then if I do 2 minus negative 3, subtracting a negative is adding a positive, that gives me 5. And if I do 7 minus 2, that gives me 5, and 12 minus 7 gives me 5. So as you notice, all of our first differences 
equals 5. So in this case, this one represents a linear equation. Now, quadratics have to do with the second differences. So not only do you subtract like we did with linear, but then you subtract the next differences. So we take a look at that also. So I'm going to do the first differences. So I have 5 minus 2 is 3. I have 6 minus 5 is 1. I have 5 minus 6. Actually, what I'm going to do is put my differences right below. All right, so let's do this. 5 minus 2 is 3. 6 minus 5 is 1. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And 2 minus 5 is negative 3. So now what we want to do is actually do the second differences, which means the next line down, we're going to subtract them. Okay, And 1 minus 3 is negative 2. Negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2, and negative 3 minus negative 1, again adding a positive, gives us negative 2. Because this second set of differences right here is the same, then we would consider that a quadratic um, Sorry, we would consider that a quadratic representation. So now let's look at the last one. Exponential, we just got done talking about those, but exponential is when you divide one value by its previous value to see what happens. So in this case, if we do 4 divided by 8, we get 0 0.5. We get 2 divided by 4, which gives us 0 0.5. 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 divided by 1 also gives us 0 0.5. And as we look here, this ratio, or when we divide them, this ratio of 1 from the one previous is the same, so that re represents an exponential situation. So let's do some practice. So our second example, we're going to look for a pattern in the table to determine what kind of model best, descri best describes this data. So I would just go down the checklist, and the first thing that I would do is look to see if it's linear. <clears throat> so I'm going to do negative 7 minus negative 3, subtracting a negative, adding a positive, so that gives us negative 4. And then I'm going to do negative 7 minus, excuse me, negative 9 minus negative 7, Adding a positive, that gives us negative 2. From here, we can stop because our first difference is not the same, so we know that this is not linear. So then, all right, so now the next one to take a look at is, is it quadratic? Okay, and what's the quadratic? That's where we do the first differences, <coughs> excuse me, and then the second differences. So I'm just going to quick write my y values here again. Negative 3, negative 7, negative 9, negative 9, and negative 7. So again, these are the y's. So I'm going to do my first differences. And then after we find our first differences, then we'll do our second differences. We've already determined <clears throat> that this is negative 4. This one is negative 2. Negative 9 minus negative 9. That's 0. And then we have negative 7 minus negative 9, which gives us positive 2. Now from here, like we said, to figure out if it's quadratic, we look at the second differences. So now we're going to do negative 2 minus negative 4. So that's a positive 2. We've got 0 minus negative 2, so that's a positive 2. And then we have 2 minus 0 is 2. And what do you notice in this case? We see that the second differences are all the same. So yes, we say this is quadratic. If the first differences and then the second differences don't work out, then I would suggest you go immediately to the exponentials to see if there's a pattern of multiplying by the same thing. So last example, we're going to look at this table and we're going to do two things. We're going to figure out which type of situation this is, linear, quadratic, or exponential. 
and then we're going to write an equation for that for this function. So as we're taking a look at this table, you might be able to know already that this is not linear. And why do I say that? Well, if I look at the end of this table here, 3 plus 3 gives me 6. In order for this to be linear, then that means 1.5 plus 3 has to equal 3. Well, and that's not possible at all because we already have 3, and 1.5 plus 3 is 4.5. So we know that this is not linear. Okay, and after we figure out if it's linear or not, then we go on to the second differences. Okay, so I'm just going to go back um, to, to these two examples that I have here. 3 minus 1.5. Alright, so we'll look to see if it's quadratic. So we did 6 minus 3 to get 3. Okay, and then we have 3 minus 1.5 to get 1.5. So there's our first differences. And then if I did 1.5 minus 0 0.75, that gives me 0.75. Now, I want to do my second differences to see what comes up. So in that case, I'm going to do 3 minus 1.5. That gives us 3 and I'm going to do 1.5 minus 0.75, that gives us 0.75. Because this second difference right here is not the same, this is not quadratic. So of the three that it leaves us with, then we would anticipate that this is going to, or come to the conclusion that this is going to be exponential. So because of that, we need to figure out what that common ratio is, meaning what do we multiply one by to get to the other one. <clears throat> All right, so that means we need to do 0 0.75 divided by 0 0.375. And that gives us 2. And then we need to do 1.5 divided by 0 0.75. That gives us 2. 3 divided by 1.5 is 2. And 6 divided by 3 is 2. So here we have confirmed that this is an exponential situation. And as the directions say, once we recognize that it's exponential, then we need to write the equation for it. Okay, our general form of an exponential equation Okay, again, this first term right here, this a, is when x is 0. And then this r is your common ratio, or what we multiply by. Ratio. Alright, so our common ratio. So from here, let's take a look at our table. So in this case, if we go back to the table, Actually, with how I wrote this equation, it's not going to be the when x is 0. Because I used this 1 as my subscript, I'm going to look for when x is 1. So my a value is 6 times, what did we multiply by? 2. And in this case, and then we have to the n minus 1 power. So that's one way we could do it. Or, if you want, you can do it where x is 0. And we can get uh, y equals 3 times 2 to the x power. I know it seems kind of weird, but both equations actually work. It depends on which value that you start with. Okay, either the term where x is equal to 1, or in this case, I picked that value where x is equal to 0. So here we've taken a look at graphs to figure out if it's linear, quadratic, or exponential. And we've taken a look at tables to figure out if it's linear, quadratic, or exponential.